Hi guys and girls and welcome to Joe's Camera. Today I'm going to touch a subject for the Khalakhari and the photographic lovers and that's black and white photography. The Kalari is known for its saturated colors of the sand and the blue skies and the dramatic clouds when there's a... Um, the rainy season but black and white is a subject that 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 comes to mind now with the photographic competition where we see people start starting to enter black and white photos in the photographic competition and something we would like to see a bit more fine art and black and white and creative photography than just a straightforward shot that that captures the behavior of the animal and more using the light and the creativity of the photographer so so today i'm just going to go through some of my my black and white images and just not talk about the technical side of it we will deal with that in another program but um, yeah this is about the the khalakhari and landscapes and animals in black and white. This specific image is uh, looking down at the uh, as the dune road from Tuerafirn hits the the Aub Valley. You can see it towards the left uh, and corner there. There's the the Aub Valley, and the typical sand with grass and then the dramatic skies. What what the black and white does of here um, is it enhances the or it brings the attention to the texture of the grasses. And it greatly enhances the attention on on the skies, and specifically the drama in the skies, because um, black and white is is about mystery, it's about abstract, and it's sometimes about timelessness. You know, if you look at this photo, it could have been taken in the 1960s, for that matter, because it's black and white, and that's where photography started in 1911 with black and white photographs so yeah once again it shows you how the the skies can lit up with a black and white and how attention is bringing and, and calm is is brought in to this image this is what the rains look like in, in black and white you can see the the thunder clouds right on top in that row of thunder clouds going from the top left to the bottom right um, corners and the rain that's pouring down once again it places the attention fully on the clouds the the tonality and the tonal range of the clouds as you can see from almost a level 12 total black with no texture to almost a pure white with no texture which which means it covers from a, from the black through to all the mid grays all the way to the whites and because it plays in the clouds the white and the darks that's what black and white is all about it gives you better drama and better mystery and 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 fine art than the color image the color image is also fine but the color um, makes everyone to interpret it the same way in this image you know some people would imagine that there's red sand and the grasses are green others would see it in black and white so black and white leaves you to interpret the image you know as you feel and how your emotions are evoked this is a simple image of the of the gate you can see the Khalakhari Trans Frontier Park written on there it's from the uh, restaurant captured and this was a the, the best sunset that I've seen in the, in the Kalari it, it had the most saturated colors that I've ever seen by far and by miles so the color image is even better but because of the different colors you can also look at the the drama and the mushroom type of cloud that it was it was a massive cell and there was a lot of rain and thunderstorm uh, uh, lightning strikes on the other side that's the Botswana Botswana side over there so um, once again it removes the color this is a very bright red as you know red sand and this was a purple pink and orange so yeah something completely different this image was was captured every time a cloud is low like this um, I capture it because it's unique to the Kalari. The Kalari clouds are, are quite high and it's thunderstorms and, and, and cells that, that move over the Kalari. But um, when when you get an elevated area like this in the, on the bank of the Alp River and you get a cloud like that, you normally race to get a subject on the foreground like that. In this instance, it was this just two small trees because it's normally overgrown on the, on the edges here. But once again, the focus brought to the trees over here look at the drama that plays out in that clouds and there's no blue or saturation to pull the eye away if there was blue it would have definitely attracted the eye but now the focus is squarely on the 
clouds. A typical scene in color that's just in black and white, just to show you what it looks like in black and white. Once again, that dramatic um, clouds uh, that looks like it's below the horizon. Uh, that's also the Alp River Valley coming down from the second dune road. Uh, that's the valley down there, and that's the rain that played all along the Namibian fence all the way up towards the north. Look at the drama and the, and the clouds. Once again, it, it, the eye plays around in the clouds, and although the color image is also dramatic, it, it's much more dramatic in black and white. A typical scene of a line, uh, not that good a condition. This was about the last time I saw it. And the specific one, lying down, not standing and drinking, lying down and drinking the puddle in the road, just shows the survival skill of the line. If there were no surface water or man-made surface water in the Kalari, that's what they do. They'll drink off puddles in the road and puddles in the pans and look at that clouds playing over and the rain falling and the horizon definitely more uh, accentuated because of the black and white image. Achterlone, just because of the clouds the image was taken. Achterlone from the other side, you can look at the rainbow in black and white. It's not the color, so you don't have the colors of the rainbow to interpret it for you, to um, to give you a focal point. Yeah, you, you, you imagine the imagination is left to the colors of the rainbow and you got these beams of light through the rainbow pointing towards your main subject, the house at Achterlone. This uh, is a, a surprising image of of colour, just um, at Achterlone itself. Here's the road is down at the bottom here. There's just one single tree, a uh, Vitgat tree right over there. And because of this white grasses that breaks the dark, so you can see the tonal rays of the grass and the dramatic sky, this, this turned out one of my favourite black and whites. And once again, uh, um, black and white, the textures in black and white plays a very important role in the interpretation of the emotions or the feeling and so on. So here you've got all of that texture and tonal range in the clouds all the way through and also in the tree and then in the grasses itself. There's a bit of spots of the, of the sensor there. It hasn't been finely edited. It's just been turned into a black and white to give you an idea. After learning from the other side... Look at that dramatic skies. Uh, it was captured because of that sky. And of course, because it's black and white, it's more accentuated, uh, the drama in the clouds. This is a line captured um, crawling up to another line. And you can look at the posture of the line, head down, concentrating ears forward, uh, moving through this bristle grass, um, white bristle grass. So it, it makes for a perfect black and white. And what I've done is I've done some veneering on the edges. You can see there the black on the on the edges there on the on the corners of the image, and that blackening of the corners of the image places the focal point squarely on the center of the line, and then look how the the light flowers actually stand out more so than in the color image in the black and white. This um, image of the cheetah because of it's so close and because of the angle to the cheetah. Look how. The cheetah is actually framing the image. There's the legs on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. It's one of Ardis' images. Another one of Ardis' images, a lioness with a beautiful pose, clean grass. And you can see one of the strong points is he's, he's um, photographing up towards the lion. The lion's head's actually dropped down and looking straight down at him. And you can see he's really uh, meaning business. Same here. Look at this green, clean grass, no shrub in the back. It's not been removed. It's exactly how it is. Look how finely textured the grass is on this black and white image. Once again, a bonus is the fact that she's looking straight in the eye. Young lion, no marks on the face, beautiful prime of her life and also a bit of veneering on the corners to actually focus on this very clean, exemplary black and white image. Another super angle with a super facial expression of the cheetah not not often seen it's that same cheetah of Horus look at the the camel thorn tree bark with the textures over there and look at the leading lines and the lines and the shapes that this cheetah is creating this is one of my favorite images this in color would show up the green at the back and the green parabos is over here and um, to take away some of the attention here 
that because it's black and white and because it's been veneering on the corners, it focuses squarely in the center and you can you can really go into the eye of that lion male looking in the eyes of his brother. Another black and white of a Tuchemsbok fighting. You can look at this guy over here. He's a continuous fighter. Look at all the marks of the horns over here. See, he loves fighting and full action shot in black and white. The veneering almost blackening everything else and concentrating all the action on the on the Gemsbok in front. And once again, works out very, very definitely for a black and white image. And you can stare longer and interpret this image. Um, the longer you stare, the more you get into the movement of the Gemsbok. So, so once again, black and white works 100%. Cheetahs, once again, looking down, they're sitting in the camel thorn tree just above the window level. And a very unusual frame. Look how the... the Cheetah is actually framing the image from there, right around there. And um, quite a different or funny pose, uh, unusual pose, which makes it a very nice image. Lion very close up, lying on its back, looking me straight in the eyes. And once again, the texture of the hair brings one's eye into the face. And you want to turn your head or turn the line. It looks unusual, but, but um, it places the attention fully onto the face. A wild cat. Look at how the textures of the camel thorn tree is playing the shapes, the C curves, the C curves, and that shapes pointing in towards the cat. Over here, the camel thorn, the light textures of the camel thorn tree accentuating the cat, different pose. You don't often see that. It was yawning and it looks almost as if it's growling at us. One of Aris's images, look how it works for the black and white. The white bottom of the legs with the black spots showing you that the legs, you look at the dark bottom side or the dark tonal range at the bottom, then you got the light background and then you get the dark top of the bird as well. So you get dark tone, white, almost white tone, dark tones, white, white and black. So, so the reverse or the opposites, white, black, white, black, white, black and Look how straight in the eye. It's beautifully composed and it works out much better than the colored image. A cheetah, one of my favorite cheetah images. They sat like that for about two minutes. I took about four shots or maybe a minute, four shots. And this black and white rendition was given a lot of grain to give it that artistic old time feeling and also a noir finish with the frame. Line on the horizon. Straightforward conversion from, from color. Look at how the the line or the shape of that two line or C shape clouds are being accentuated because it's a black and white image. And also how the three thorns and the grass are standing out against that silhouette. A more dramatic black and white. So there you can still see it and there it was silhouetted to create that evening feeling as if the moon shining so you can play around with the black and white and you can have another conversion as well where you zoom right in there and you get a much closer look at at the line also a noir fine art rendition of this line drinking in the road giving a lot of grain move right in to give that look at the main also it forms part of the noir or the veneering at the corners of the image it's almost as if his face has been veneering same line, just a straightforward, different pose. This image was taken specifically for black and white. I saw that and I realized that this white of here would accentuate the ostrich standing there. And it's got all of these lines. It's got black. It's got a white section. It's got another bit darker tonal range. Then this is a, a dark stripe that almost sandwiches the ostrich with the foreground, then the tonal range goes to lighter, the light spot over here, and then almost black on the left-hand corner. So you play around with light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, dark, light, dark, light. So exactly what one wants in a black and white image and almost minimalistic fine art. In the color image, you can't see the clouds over here. So it was cropped over here and 
just given an extra dimension because of the cloud. A straightforward shot of a dune and a grey camel thorn tree and a three thorn with a Gemsbok track that's going over and look how close that clouds are to this tree. This is what makes it exceptional. It looks like it's a, a, a mist that's lying right behind, below this tree or behind this tree and below this, which makes this quite unique. Same with this. If this was color, it would have looked like a green tree, uh, beige grasses, and some blue, and a very fine cloud. But this makes it much more dramatic, artistic, almost fine art. Another ostrich that was, that was captured specifically for black and white, and there you can see what I mean once again, the foreground, that dark texture or dark zoned light or line that sandwiches this and then this black towards the left and this light cloud. So what we do is we're talking about shapes and patterns that we got in the sky. Look, there's another circular, almost oval shape, and there's a line that stops. It doesn't go through the uh, ostrich. It stops right there. A shot at Askam, at the uh, at Askam, just as you come out of town. Uh, it turned out an exceptional black and white. Look at the textures and, and the clouds standing out in the sky. And this is obviously a red, red sand dune, but you cannot see the road or the tracks, the three tracks like this one, this one, this one, as good as you can see this. And this is actually made for black and white. Another one coming out of the local area, Askam is just over there. And here exceptional is the angle of the trees lying towards the left. And it looks like these clouds are moving over in a strong wind towards the left, forcing these trees towards the left. A grey camel thorn tree, that's... What I can see in the blue sky, the grey camel thorn tree comes out almost whitish like this with the Gemsbok or the Oryx that, that just makes it an additional strong point in the image. But this is, this is what I love about the grey camel thorns is they make beautiful black and whites such as this one. And this one with the double, double keys in the foreground. Dark polarized blue turned out black. Exactly what you want from black to pure white, and then you've got all the tonal range in between. So perfect in the Calari for black and white. You would go very far to get an image like that elsewhere. This is the day of the jackal. The day I saw this jackal running, chasing a stenbok, fully grown stenbok, from a water hole for, I don't know how far, probably 900 meters to a kilometer, and it fought him, and it killed him exactly like a lion would kill a hemsbok. In black and white, because the color has been removed, and it forces you towards this subject in the center, the eye, and so on, and it works very well. And just a different uh, image altogether in black and white because it's black and white's fundamentally abstract. It is definitely more dramatic in the black and white, the specific image, and it adds a bit of mystery to the image. So that's it. Some black and white images of the Kalahari. I hope it inspires some other guys to do some black and white images, play around. Be creative and um, follow some of the stuff that I've said. Remember that, that black and white has got no saturation. If you take an image and you remove the saturation, that's black and white. So um, it is all about the form and the texture of the image. So, so therefore, you've got to be more artistic and some of that compositional elements are actually um, emphasized in black and white. So I hope you enjoy it. Until next time, be safe. 